Hey guys, so today I have a really fun unboxing and swatching video for you. I just got this package in from a company in St. Louis called St. Louis Art Supply. And they carry some really unique, hard to find in the US stuff. And I actually purchased one of the things that is in this box a few weeks back or a couple months ago. And I liked it so much that I decided I would buy more of them. And so full disclosure, I did buy all of these paints myself with my own money, but St. Louis Art Supply did actually send me a couple little extra things for free. I'm going to box them and then we're gonna swatch them and I'm gonna show you how to use them in my Mossery sketchbook with this amazing cat on it. Okay, so this is what we got. And they're really fun. So I'm gonna have to explain it because I had never actually heard of this before or seen them or knew that they existed. They are by a company called Boku Undo and they are called, I am totally gonna to butcher this, but they are called Saiboku Aya. Basically they're ink sticks. The reason I went and bought more of them is because I actually did a video on my Patreon and I tested out one of these and I just, it was one of the coolest things that I have ever painted with and I just thought it would be fun to buy more of them. We're gonna take some of these things out of this pretty little box. I went a little crazy and I bought a range of colors actually because I just have no self control. But also I wanted to have a good range of mixing colors and there were some other just random colors that I thought would be interesting. I have one also, so I technically have 10 total. They all vary in price from around, I wanna say from around like $10 to maybe like 20 something dollars, I can't really remember. I don't actually remember the names of the colors that I purchased. I'm gonna put a full list in the description with links to everything that I bought. Here they all are, unorganized but they're so cool. So let's just open one of these up and take a look at it. So this is what the ink stones actually look like. And we'll take one out. It has a little info card or like a little info sheet about them, but it's in Japanese <laughs> and I can't read Japanese, but it's okay, there's an English, I think the uh, thing that it comes with the paper that St. Louis Art Supply sends is translated from this. But they're literally just these really cool sticks of ink. But yeah, so they're technically Sumier, Sumier, Sumier inks. I didn't know that Sumier inks could be in colors other than black, but I was clearly wrong. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like super excited about all these things. It's made the same way that Sumie ink is made, I believe. I'm not entire, I'm not exactly sure. I don't completely remember. So don't quote me on this, but it's just an interesting medium. It's basically, you can almost like think of it kind of like watercolors, but in little fun stick form. And they are all handmade also. So that's kind of why the shapes vary, I believe. This is the first one I bought, and this is in the marigold color, and this is the one that I've actually already tested and used. But I am gonna bring it out. St. Louis Art Supply did send me this ink stone as a gift, as well as this little brush. So we're gonna use this brush too, because I've never used this brush before, so. And I like new brushes. So this is a porcelain ink stone. So this is technically how you're supposed to activate these traditionally. Now, when I tried the first one out, I didn't have an ink stone, so I just used my glass palette, but we're probably gonna use a mix of both things. And then this brush, this is a really cool, this is a cool little brush, actually. It has a really nice little tip. That's, I love the color too, the color, like I get really excited about colors and aesthetics as I'm sure some of you guys know. <laughs> These, I don't know, I really, I love Japanese packaging. Like to me, this just looks so retro. The green is just, it's, it's really cool. I'll just kind of swirl and remove the sizing out of the brush. Cause I, that has a really nice point. I'm actually really excited to use this brush. 
I have a couple random Japanese brushes that I've picked up over the years, just kind of more traditional Japanese brushes, and I really do like them a lot. The interesting thing I noticed about this ink stone just now is that the texture of the actual stone itself is kind of rough. It's almost like a very fine sandpaper. I don't know why that is, and I'm gonna look it up afterwards because I am genuinely interested. What you do is you take your ink stick and you just kind of slowly, oh, that sounds really nice, listen. Wow, that's really peaceful. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm such a dork, but, but yeah, you just kind of rub it onto the stone just to kind of slowly activate the pigment. And I think it's supposed to be kind of like a peaceful meditative process, which I'm actually finding it quite meditative. Now what we'll do, I'm gonna swatch these in my Mossery sketchbook. It's a mixed media sketchbook. I like swatching things in the sketchbook. Let's move all this stuff up and move all this stuff over. They've made quite the mess, but it's okay. It basically just works like watercolor. Now I wanna see how fine of a point I can get on this brush, actually. Ooh, that is a fine, tiny point. Now these all mix together. I've actually, when I did the video on my Patreon, I mixed this paint with just traditional Western style watercolor and it worked fine. It was really, it was interesting, it was fun. I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna put this over here to kind of dry because I don't want to ruin the box because I like the box. Okay, so I know this one for sure is called Marigold. Now I wonder if the inkstone, the texture of the inkstone, the sandpaper texture, is to make the watercolor, or not the watercolor, the ink more granulating. But if you look at this, the sandpapery stuff, I feel, or not the sandpaper, the texture of the inkstone, I felt like made this pigment kind of it could also just be the, the paint itself, or the ink itself, I don't actually know. So I am gonna try that again, because it looks really granulated on the paper itself, which is really cool. Yeah, this brush is really nice. I have to look up and see what it is, because I'm not sure. I'd actually be interested to try this on some different paper, because I've only tried it on cotton rag paper, and then this, I'm, I think this is cotton paper, I'm not sure. It's a mixed media paper. So, just because I'm interested, I wanna see if this pigment itself is actually granulating or if it's the ink stone that's making, causing it to have more granulation just because of the way you grind it on there. Yeah, cause like this is, it's just very smooth and not granulated at all. So I'm going to just kind of paint a little circle next to this and see if it granulates as much as the one that I ground up on the ink stone. I don't know a lot about traditional Japanese painting, honestly, which is kind of weird to me because I grew up in the art and antique business and my family collected Japanese and Chinese antiques and I personally collect 20th century Japanese woodblock prints and paintings, but I really don't know a lot about the technical aspects of most art things in general, honestly. So, okay, we're gonna leave that there. I, like I said, I think this is vermilion. I'm not totally positive, but I think, I'm pretty sure it's vermilion. You know, I kinda wanna put it in the inkstone, actually. Well, we'll just do it here for now. This is just really fun to me. <laughs> this also may not be vermilion, but I'm pretty, I'm gonna be feel really lame, but it might not be, but I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's vermilion. It's either vermilion or maybe it's an orange. I don't remember. I wonder, it would activate better on the ink stone. Like it's fine, but I'm wondering if it would do better. Get some more pigment out if I did it on the little ink thingy. You know what, let's just kind of like, I wanna just see. I'm gonna do it in this corner and try not to mix them, but. Oh, it definitely, okay. Yeah, I think I probably should be using the ink stone because it's definitely giving me more pigment if I use it on the actual thing that you're supposed to use with it. Yeah, this is, I think you're definitely just supposed to use it on the ink stone and not just the glass palette that I have. But that's okay. Let's see, so this is just with the glass palette. Interesting, yeah, it's nowhere near as pigmented, so I guess you definitely need the ink stone to kind of grind it up. You learn something new every day. I wonder if there's some kind of thing that I can get that's like a giant ink stone. 
I'm just gonna try to do a little bit in the inkstone for the swatching anyway, so then I can do a few colors on one thing. This is a pretty color too. It's funny because I really genuinely do love art supplies a lot. I feel like it's its own separate hobby <laughs> in a way. I only started kind of half casually painting with watercolor, I think in late 2017, very, very late, like around Christmas time. And I kind of painted just a little bit here and there, just kind of for fun. I actually started painting because I wanted to do calligraphy for my wedding invitations. And I thought it'd be fun to just kind of learn to do it. Cause I don't know, I just like having hobbies. And I was traveling a lot at the time and it was kind of hard to take the ink with me. And so I just bought a set of handmade watercolors to use in lieu of ink. And then on a whim, I just thought it would be fun again. Cause I think it was like Christmas time and I was kind of bored and I followed a tutorial and I actually painted something and I thought it was really cool. I don't know, it was weird. Cause I never actually thought I could paint or do anything like that. And then I kind of started just a little bit. And then when the pandemic started, I had all this free time because I lost my main source of income and I just started painting more and drawing more. I didn't really grow up doing art. I was a music major, actually. I wanted to write music for films. And so I grew up kind of like as the musician that would write music and scores and all sorts of things. And so I never really started playing with art supplies up until maybe the past, well, about the past year and a half. And so I think whenever I find anything, I'm just so excited by literally every single art supply of all time. And I, I see, I, I'll find random things sometimes and I'll buy one to test out. And sometimes things don't work out and that's okay. But I found some really neat random stuff just because I like to test things. I found this, well, these ink sticks, for example, like I think these are amazing. I think they're so fun to work with. And I'm actually very excited to see what I can do with them. But I found this vinyl emulsion paint just randomly. I think I saw someone using it on Instagram and I thought it was really cool. So I bought some and it has probably become some of my favorite paint. I use it for so many different things. I use it for underpaintings for oil and I use it for just a million other things. I think I'm just so excited by it all because I didn't grow up painting really or drawing other than just, you know, little kid things. And so to me, just like everything's new and exciting. <laughs> yeah, this, this stuff is really neat. This is a great day. I'm actually really glad that they sent me this ink stone because I would have not, I wouldn't have bought one on my own, honestly but I think the ink stone is very important. That's what I've learned. So if you want to get some of this paint to play with, I would definitely buy the ink stone. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is this other like red color. Oh, this is like a magenta maybe. Cause I know I got a, I, this one I know is like a purpley violet. I think, I, I want to say this one was actually called peony or something, like a flower. So this one I think is the purpley one, whatever, the violet or something. I think also the way the ink stone, the little granulating bits, the kind of sandpapery texture of the inkstone itself stops the water from pooling to other parts of the inkstone. So you can technically activate a few colors along here at once. This is a really nice, nice brush. I really like painting circles. I don't know why. They look like speech bubbles. <laughs> Okay, I actually wanna do a couple more diluted swatches of these, just for fun. That's it. That is a really beautiful purple, actually. Okay, and let's dilute this like magenta-y color too, just. These are actually, I feel like these are a really good price, actually, for the quality of color. They're drying really vibrant, which excites me. And I do feel like the colors, to me anyways, they do seem to lean on the slightly warmer side, which is what I really, really like. Like that to me is just so, like this is cool. I really, this is a, this is a neat little toy. <laughs> this one was one of the more expensive ones, I wanna say, I wanna say, I don't remember how much it cost, but I wanna say it was like 20 or 25 bucks for this one. Now these aren't cheap by any means, but I do feel like the quality and the amount of actual ink you get is a lot. It's, I feel like it's a good price. This is just too fun for my brain. <laughs> Let's do this blue. I wonder if they lift. I should test that. I don't know, I feel like I'm not really concerned with things I should be concerned about because I feel like I don't actually use anything the way it's supposed to be used. I guess there's no rules when you're doing art, right? You can just do what you want, it's fine. 
this color. I don't think that's vermilion, actually. I think that's just orange, maybe. But I do, I like that a lot. And I like this pink too. I have a really hard time with pinks because I feel like I don't like most of them. Most of them are just kind of very pink. And I don't really like that. This one is, this one I think was a really warmer, like a warmer blue or a bluey green maybe. I don't know, this was one of the more inexpensive ones. And it does say on the box in yen how much it costs. And it actually is about the same price that I paid for them. But I, I haven't, I've never even seen these. Like I have, I have no idea where you even get them. And like I said, St. Louis Art Supply, they do a really good job of finding some really, really cool stuff. Things that I've just never seen or heard of and like these ink sticks. They're a really cool, friendly little store. If it's something that I need and they sell it, I will buy it from them. And this is not, like I said, this isn't sponsored at all. Ooh, I think I picked a nice color palette. Try to save room for the one I have left. <laughs> I tried to pick colors that I thought would work well with my work or that I could just use together to mix colors to work well with my work. These colors are really, really great. They're very, they're so vibrant. Now that we've swatched all this, I wanna mix some of the colors. Let's do a rainbow. Oh wait, I'm literally like not even painting on the screen. Go figure, it's fine. <laughs> I probably should have drawn a wheel first instead of whatever I'm doing here. It's gonna be a color something. Color mess, a color road. What is this? This is like a color worm. That's what it is. <sighs> it's fine. Let's kind of go back on the road. A rainbow racetrack. A really weird rainbow racetrack, I don't know. It's a weird, weird time. Get our murky greens. I probably should use a different blue to make a nice green, but that's okay. Be an olivey green. Mm. Well, I mean, it's not fine. It's kind of ugly, but let's be better. I don't like this green. It's ugly. Goodbye. And let's put in the more aqua blue. See if we can get a better green with that. I should have put that in there to begin with, but it's okay. There we go. Now we have a better green. Oh God, now there's, oh no, I'm just putting too many colors in. I've just made a big mess. Hold on. It's fine, everyone. I'm a really messy painter, very messy swatcher. Just, I'm just really messy. There's our sad color rainbow, our color racetrack. <laughs> but I like it, I think it, I think these colors work really well together. Look, like this just looks so pretty to me. I'm just like a basic, a basic girl. I have no shame. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is kind of just test a couple things. I wanna try this out, like, really try this out on um, real paper, like on actual watercolor paper. But I wanted to test some ideas for painting, like a painting first before I just kind of like wasted all my nice paper. I kind of did something like this with mixed media recently, but I want to try it again with this. A lot of my work has always been inspired by 20th century Japanese woodblock prints. There's one artist in particular that I really love, his nature pieces, Ohara, O'Hara, or Kosan, or also known as Shosan Kosan. And I really, I just, I think his nature pieces are just absolutely beautiful, and they always have moons in them. <laughs> Japanese prints, they usually have like a, the moon kind of fades into, it's like a gradient almost. So it's kind of fading, I've seen it a lot, and that's kind of what I like to do too. I actually started doing more fady kind of moons a lot more recently. I just think they look really pretty. This isn't the best circle, but it's fine. I want, you know what I'm gonna do? This isn't as dark as I'd like. So where's that green? Mix some things. There we go. Make a big giant mess. It's fine. I always really like drawing branches. I don't know why. I always take so many photos of just like random trees, especially in the winter, just to kind of see how the branches grow. I think it's really interesting. When I first started painting and drawing more seriously, the hardest thing for me was color. I couldn't figure out how to make my paintings look the way I wanted color-wise. But color was just hard. It was hard for me at first. And I became like really fixated and like obsessed with trying to learn color theory, you know, color mixing. And now I just, I don't even really think about it. I just know kind of what to do to get the effect that I'm looking for. 
And that's really cool. Because I think art, in my opinion anyways, I think art's just like anything else. It's just practice. The more you practice, it's like the more you practice the piano, the better you're gonna get at the piano. And the more you practice drawing and painting, the better you're gonna get at it. I think that being open to always learning and trying to improve is really important too. I'll share things with my friends and they know that they do not need to be afraid of telling me if something looks dumb or if a color is weird because I sometimes will look at something for so long I'll really fixate on one aspect of it and I can't see past that and so when you share something with somebody and they're able to critique you and tell you now again, like I said, everything, it's all somebody's opinion, right? But I think if you're able to take critique well, then I think that you can become a better artist because people will notice things that you don't necessarily notice. But I drew this um, little elephant thing for my Patreon rewards this month and I, I don't know why, I was really fixated on making its little body <laughs> like a green color for some reason. I fixated on it so hard and it really wasn't working, but I was so fixated, I couldn't really see that it wasn't working. And But one of my friends, she was like, I don't know, just maybe try a different color. And I had to accept it and then I did. I was like, you're right. And I ended up creating something that worked a lot better than my green elephant body with his little yellow head. I guess I look at art differently sometimes because I, I didn't go to art school and I didn't grow up doing art really. I, I started, like I said, I started doing music and I always wrote music and I doodled. I didn't really think I could draw or paint or anything. I collected art and I grew up in the antique business so I knew what looked nice. And then I got into photography. I started doing photography and I did weddings for a very, very long time. But then I think it got to a point where I just felt like I couldn't do anything else with photography at all. It was just there you know like for me there was only so much I felt like I could do with it and then I there was nothing else I could learn and then I started to get really bored because I used to do a lot of art photography before I did weddings and stuff and I got into tin types a little bit and that was really fun but it was just I don't know but I think with art to me it's been really enjoyable because I feel like it's constantly changing because I'm constantly changing my experiences are constantly changing so the things I paint naturally are gonna just change and evolve over time, and that's really cool. And so it keeps my ADHD brain pleased, <laughs> I guess. No, I don't wanna get the box gross. <laughs> I know I always say I want my, my art supplies to be nice, but realistically, I'm kind of not, I, I use my art supplies a lot. They get very loved. I always wanna try to keep them like really nice and pretty, but it just doesn't happen. I have some, Japanese ink. So, what I'm gonna do, I have a dip pen somewhere. Where is it? Oh, here. Okay. Oops. Oh God, I'm gonna make a big mess. I got really into drawing these little bats, like little kind of tiny bats in a distance. When I did Magic Tober, I became like fixated on it. I thought it was just, it was just so fun. And I started drawing them in like everything. I know in a lot of Shin Hanga Japanese prints, there's a lot of silhouettes. I like that a lot. One day I'll do a video on my Japanese print collection. It's not as big as it used to be because I used to just sell a lot of my prints when I'd find stuff, I would just sell it. It's getting so much harder to find a lot of these prints I've noticed. I hardly, I used to be able to go to an antique show and find at least one, usually more than one. And now I, I hardly see them at all anywhere. And so whenever I get them now, I just kind of keep them, I add them to my collection. I actually am gonna start trying to do, this bat's a little wonky. Let's try to make him bigger so he's less weird. Oh well, it's fine. I'm gonna try to turn a lot of my illustrations into actual traditional Japanese style woodblock prints. We're gonna see how that goes. I don't know if it's gonna be good. <laughs> it might not be, but it's okay. A lot of people ask me why I always draw these color swatches on the side of my illustrations. And, and the reason is actually really simple, I guess. When I first started drawing a lot of my illustrations and a lot of my pieces, I always drew them with the intent of turning them into Japanese woodblock prints. And a lot of traditional Japanese and Chinese painting has calligraphy, poems, and signatures and stuff on the side. And I feel like, it, to me, 
it's always been such an important part of the pieces. And I don't know Japanese or calligraphy. So I started drawing the color swatches on the sides or in certain parts of the paintings to kind of almost like an ode to Japanese and Chinese paintings. That's why, that's why I have color swatches on things. And I felt like it just always kind of completed the paintings. Probably should have made these more saturated, but I don't care. Sketchbook test, guys, that's what. That's what sketchbook tests are for. Cause you can get some pretty saturated colors with these. Probably should double layer them, but I won't. But yeah, that's my version of calligraphy. <laughs> Just little, little color swatch on the sides. And I also really love kind of vintage illustrations. I, I mean, I collect a lot of things on a lot of just like print proofs, you, they would do, they would always be like, kind of like color codes and stuff on the sides. And I always thought that was really neat. Even on fabric, they'll have the colors, which is cool. It's our little bat drawing. So now that this is mostly dry, just gonna kind of show you guys close-ups of the color swatches of the 10 colors that I have. They're so lame, but this is probably my favorite color, the yellows, and I do love this a lot and this blue. But, and then this is just kind of like a little sketchbooky kind of illustration of a branch with bats. I love the granulation in this paint. So you can really see the granulation here, and then here in this purple and this one, but I think it's just, it's really, it's cool paint. I keep saying paint and I know it's ink, but it's fine. The inkstone is 100% a must, I think, if you want to use these. It made, it was completely different than, I'll even show you, like, these are the, like a couple of these were the ones that I activated just on the glass palette, and this is the inkstone. You can definitely see, like, a huge difference there. If you do want to try these out, you could probably get away with just getting, like, a couple primaries, and then you could mix them. I kind of got, like, a set-ish of primary s colors and then this brush i'm gonna i'm gonna figure out what brush this is and link it i liked painting with it a lot and it has such a fine tip so anyways that was it i'm gonna go clean up my messy fingers and i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope you guys check out these ink stick things so have a great rest of your day bye